he worked in this family business to start. They were in fashion, and when it was dissolved, he decided to form his own company, and it, it was called P.J. Walsh. I remember it. And this, in 1975, he met Nicole Miller, he interviewed her and hired her. By 1982, he entered into a partnership with Nicole, lucky girl, and renamed his company after her. He is a member of the Educational Foundation for Fashion Industries at FIT. And Mr. Conheim is one of the fashion industry's outstanding merchants and entrepreneur. Um, he will also show a video, but you are all fortunate and blessed to have him here because he's left a meeting, an important meeting, to be here. And uh, make sure you listen to all, every word, all his advice, because it's worth a lot, let me tell you. Uh, I'm, Mr. Cunningham, I'm going to make a few, you know, here. Um, uh, and as far as uh, our class, CL 112 Faces and Places in Fashion, next week is your big day. We're having the final exam, multiple choice, and there'll be 20 multiple choice questions and answers. One student asked me, could I give a hint what it's about? I said, I can't do that. You made notes all semester pertaining to each guest speaker. You will do that today, too, with Mr. Kahnheim's uh, talk. And it will be pertaining to the career and the background of every guest speaker. So make sure you, you make note of all that. It won't be hard, I can assure you. But it'll be tricky, so it'll be a trick to see if you really paid attention. And uh, so, you know, next week uh, you'll be here at uh, no later than 4 o'clock, the A to L will be here, and when you're finished, uh, the M to Zs will come after that, about uh, 4.45, 4.30, be here, because it won't take long, okay? And that's the important thing. Of course, the usual speech, turn off your cell phones, that's what drives me crazy, and the guest speaker, and uh, that's all I'm going to say, okay? Field trips, okay, we won't talk about them because I don't want to hear about it myself. And I'm dying to turn over the podium to my dear, dear friend, Bud Kahnheim. Thank you, Alice. Thank you. Yeah, now do this. Look at that. Um, I have a feeling this is a very easy class because it's the room is filled. So I, uh, I did the same thing at school. We would spend most of the time figuring out which classes we could uh, ace and then take those. It made my life much easier. Anyhow, when you get out and you get into our business, a lot of the things that Alice said about, you know, how important I am and what a genius and all this kind of stuff, uh, not, not necessarily so. I've, I'm fourth generation in the business, and uh, it's all been based on a very old French, making, uh, French dressmaking idea of design. But where I am now, this is my, now 2007 marks my 52nd year in the business. So looking back, I'm, I say to myself, I would have been better off being born Paris Hilton than, than Bud Conheim because with zero talent, just being Paris Hilton is her entire job, and that's all she has to do. She doesn't have to do anything else. She can take off her underwear or make a porno film and have, a, have the number one selling fragrance in the country, and, and really, that's all she has to do. And, and I pick on her because she is the, like the number one um, uh, symbol of, of what we're old timers are up against in the business. Making great product and great, doing great design is what we believe in, but what the stores are filled with today is not necessarily great design and, and, and great things that come out of a school like this, unless, unless you're hired by Paris Hilton to do something like that, or when you're hired by Britney Spears, if you're hired by Jessica Simpson, or if you're hired by JLo, if you're hired by some of those people that have nothing to do with fashion, but are pumping the stores full of fashion, it's, it's, they have to have someone do it, and maybe that's, maybe that's the name of the game. It's not the name of the game at Nicole Miller. 
And um, <clears throat> just to uh, uh, show you a 20-minute video, I'm going to show you the video of our spring line, which will be in the stores starting now right through February. But this, this is a uh, video that's based on uh, a Mayan culture. And why would we base anything on a Mayan culture? Because we started years ago on authentic um, research into uh, old established cultures. The first one was Celtic, which is Irish, Scottish, Welsh. And Nicole went and did three months, she and her staff, three months of serious research on those designs. And we made a, a, an entire um, season out of Celtic designs that were brought back, pulled apart, put back together again, and made into Nicole Miller fabrics. And the, 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 the biggest one was the one that Angelina Jolie was wearing in that famous picture with Brad Pitt, where they're advertising Mr. and Mrs. Smith, and she's in that beautiful Nicole Miller dress. I don't know if you remember it, but the, the main thing was that the picture was taken when supposedly they said they weren't sleeping together, and everybody knew they were, and they were standing in a, a foot apart, and she was wearing our dress, and that was the first, that was the Celtic design. After that came uh, Viking. She did a whole Norwegian Viking thing, which some of that ancient stuff looks like Celtic, and then she did Byzantine, and in this um, video, it's Mayan, and the Mayan came out of a vacation that she had in Tulum, and then they went back and did about three months of research in Mayan uh, uh, pictures and Mayan um, art, and you'll see it in the prints here. So look, when you, when, I sh when you see the video, look for the references to Mayan art. The jewelry is Mayan inspired. The colors are Mayan and absolutely out of that part of Mexico. And our next ad campaign is also going to be, it's taken from the desert and it's in these um, colors. So are we ready with that video? And just sit back and look at this thing and, and picture yourself uh, designing out of this culture and then I'll say a few oh, words I after know. that and then I have to get out of here. Dear Mr. and Mrs. Troublemaker, I want to marry your son.
How many people here are fashion, are design uh, students? Fashion. Oh, good. How many are marketing? Okay. So I don't have to talk to the marketing people, I can talk to the design people. There were, in that, in that show, in addition to the authenticity of the, my, of the cultural research that they did to get, come up with all that Mayan stuff, if anybody else, can anybody else pick on something that's absolutely new this season in silhouettes? Any, do I have a hand? Drop waist. Right. Drop waist. She gets an A, Alice. Blue scarf. Just anybody with a blue scarf gets an A. Okay? The, um, we've been on pier for, for a long, long, long time, and what happens is when it goes one way for a long time, everybody, everybody has it in their closet and you're looking for a change. And so Nicole, Nicole came out with the drop waist. She's a master at um, draping. Her education is Chambre Syndicale Haute Couture in Paris, where they spent one semester on a sleeve about four or five months draping one sleeve. And then um, she, when she comes out with a silhouette, she, what? Oh, excuse me. <laughs> Did any, anybody hear the last hour of what I was saying? Yeah, anyhow. So anyhow, the drop waist is what was new. The, um, Nicole is a, a, a genius at draping, which is actually what her talent was right out of school, the best, most talent. She's also a genius at, at print. But the, the drop waist now, we were early in it. Everybody's been used to the Ampere. And so what's selling for us now, this has been selling now since September. So here we are at the beginning of December. So that's, forget September, because it's the, it, we just started to sell it in September. But say October and November, after two months of serious selling it to the stores, the drop waist separates are our number one booking uh, pieces of clothing. But the dresses, the drop waist, dress, drop waist dresses, are someplace back in the middle and towards the lower end of the scale. They're not as, as popular. And it's something you want to think of in both in marketing and in designing. When you come out with a new silhouette, sometimes the easiest way to buy it is the way it sells first. So the easiest way to buy anything is in a separate, because it's not as big an investment. You can put it with different things. You can make it look different. The second you buy a dress, that's it, you're, you're clothed from shoulder to hemline. So that's, num that's one thing about this show, is the introduction of a new silhouette, which gives life to the uh, line. Our, our business happens to be really so seriously good this year. We're almost triple last year. Uh, one of the things that's made the business so good is a fabric that Nicole discovered five years ago put it on the line and couldn't get, we couldn't cut it. We couldn't get a single sale on the thing for two years. We finally got it started about three years ago. And last year, it went crazy. Does any, do any of the design students know what that crinkle fabric that was in this show, does anybody know what that is? Pardon? Ta taffeta. No, it's not taffeta. It, what's it, what is it made out of? Does anybody know what it's made out of? Pardon? Yeah, it's, it's not metallic, it's metal. It's actually metal. It's 47% metal. And, and everybody rejected it five years ago, four years ago, three years ago. We got a couple of specialty stores into it. And, and it, it was just a giant hit for us this year because we're the only ones that had it. Uh, we're the only ones that knew how to sew it. And everybody was gobbling it up. And now we have Every couture house, you'll see it from 2007, every couture house is now just getting into it, and it'll be all over the place uh, eventually. But that was another thing that was brand new uh, for us three years ago, and it also was very strong in this show. Um, you all recognize the Mayan influence patterns, and they're pure from beginning to end. That's a result of original research. And um, the, the label that people put on us from all of this uh, work that we do is the word authentic. And the word authentic is not really used a lot in, in our industry, it's, but it's what Americans are crying for. They, want, they don't want just a lot of stuff thrown at them. They want something that's real they can believe in. A block south of here, two blocks south of here, you have a grocery store that's called Whole Foods. 
and they are sweeping the country. The prices are more expensive. They're selling their grapefruits over everybody else's because people believe that Whole Foods has authentic food. So you tell me what's the difference between their grapefruits and everybody else's grapefruits. grapefruits. The, the thing is everybody believes that Whole Foods go, goes about selecting their food and getting it into the store in an authentic way that has nothing to do with chemicals and is some kind of pure way of farming. And, and so they have really captured the imagination of American people. Well, design, everything is similar. I mean, the, the design, the authenticity of the design is really, really resonates, really resonates with people that love these patterns and are buying these kind of clothes. So if you're talking about design and marketing, probably the most important thing you can do is to stand alone. Uh, if it's ugly and stands alone, that's not a good idea. So if it's good looking and stands alone, you've really got um, the marketing part done because you've got something that you have a story to tell. You have something to sell. It's mine. It's mine alone. It doesn't look like anybody else's. So nobody says, nobody questions you about the price because it has nothing to, not, they have nothing to compare it to. And if you if you have people that like this, like originality and like authenticity and like uh, new things, then your business will be successful. And, and so back to what I was talking about in the first place, which is the Paris Hilton, the Lindsay Lohan, the, uh, the J-Lo, the P. Diddy, all of the people that got into our business through some other idea. I mean, I don't know if any of you remember what P. Diddy's claim to fame was. He shot up a nightclub when he was dating uh, J-Lo. I mean, uh, J-Lo. So how does that give them credibility for the fashion business? Well, it doesn't, but it doesn't matter because that's crowding up the department stores. What you'll find is that a lot of these names that I just mentioned are not big in the boutiques. They're really big in department stores. And the separation now in the world is between the mass department stores and the mass chain stores and the design and the, and the better product. And, and who is going to win that battle? I would put my money on, since I've been in doing it so long and I've seen it happen so many times over and over and over in different versions, <clears throat> what will happen is the, the world will come apart with two ideas. People will buy something for design and other people will buy something just for price. And so the people who sell on that basis, the people who sell on the basis of design will pick out different designs and they'll, they'll shape their retail stores to be individual and they'll cater a customer who wants something different. And the people who sell, who buy things and get into a price war will sell just based on price. And can anybody here tell me who wins the price war? No, let me give you the answer because I don't have time. The answer is the person who wins the price war is the person who sells it for zero. So if you want to be in that business, selling for zero, you will win the price war, but you won't be around very long unless you have a very rich father or a very rich boyfriend or a very rich husband. So I've got to get back to a, a meeting. This is, this is the video. I'm Bud Conheim. My partner is Nicole Miller. I've got about uh, five minutes. I'll answer some questions about anything in the world. Um, and then I've got to get out of here. Not, not a question in, not a question in the crowd? Question, yes. Right. The, the, the question was, um, Nicole, Nicole did, a, did a lot of research for her, um, for the textiles and for the to authenticity of the designs. Does she ever come to the um, FIT textile library and uh, with Dorothy, what's her name's uh, um, museum? Nicole doesn't do every bit of, des of research herself. She has a staff that brings it back to her. So they come here, they cover everything. We cover every museum in New York. When she's doing Mayan research, she's, some people went to Mexico to bring it back. Some people went to Ireland on the Celtic stuff. We had to send people to Turkey to get the Byzantine stuff. But she doesn't go on every trip because it's only 365 days a year. So, but yeah, she. We cover everything. Anything that the textile research doesn't just start and stop with FIT. They go into vintage stores. They go do everything. They cover every square inch of anything that's discoverable. So it's really, it's very, it's, you could write a PhD on the Mayan 
um, art culture from what they did. That's how strong it is, and that goes with the Celtic and everything else. Anybody else? Yeah. Now, the question is, are we a green-inspired uh, house, and, and would we mirror the uh, Mayan idea of using green fat? They, Mayans used it because they didn't have the alternative. They didn't have polyester, and they didn't have stuff like that. We uh, favor all natural fibers. Um, uh, rayon is one of the fibers we use that people think is a synthetic, but it's not. Rayon is made from trees. The, the problem with the uh, being green in the, and I'm, what I'm trying to do is to answer the question in a way that you'll really understand what, what we know by being green. Nicole is a, the biggest contributor to Riverkeeper, and I'm the biggest contributor to the Rocky Mountain Institute, which is a think tank uh, about uh, renewable resources. When it comes to fabrics, uh, rayon comes from trees but it's treated with a, an acid that's like vinegar that gets it into the fiber that it, that it uh, is. Cotton, the treatment of cotton, even though cotton, 100% cotton is a natural fiber, the treating of cotton is polluting. The dyeing of fabrics that you see in the prints here, if they're dyed and discharged, that runoff is polluting. There, there, are, there are hardly anything in our industry that is absolutely green, and don't let anybody tell you any different. The, the reason we use natural fabrics is because they're, they're natural and they breathe, and they're better on the skin than, than uh, some of the synthetics, most of the synthetics. But we are, Nicole and I are both committed to renewable resources, but when it gets right down to the fabrics, every fabric that you're wearing, unless it is, uh, unless it's seriously uncombed, untreated, un really unlaundered, it's, it's, got, it's got something to do with polluting runoff. Even if you take a denim that's been washed, what are you talking about? They had soap on the thing, they had, they had chemicals on it, they put sand wash on it, and the next thing you know, that's all runoff. <coughs> to get off fashion for a second, the Rocky Mountain Institute has a, uh, science that they developed called biophilia. I'm getting long-winded because that's an interesting question. Biophilia is a science that, th that examines how nature solves its own problems. And one of the things they did when they developed this science of biophilia, and uh, if you're taking notes, Rocky Mountain is rmi.org, rmi.org. If you're interested in the environment, look it up. I, we support a, uh, a study chair there that's the most sought after chair in, in all the technical schools every year, and this is the type of stuff they develop, biophilia. One of the things they developed and they discovered and developed in biophilia is how the lily pad stays clean. And so they examine the lily pad, and what you think is a smooth surface under a, a microscope turns out to be tiny little bumps. And so what happens is when the water falls on the lily pad, it lifts the dirt off the lily pad and washes away, and so the lily pad seems to always look clean. So they went to Ford, and they asked Ford to invent the paint for their cars that would have, that would look smooth to the touch and to the, to the eye, but would have little tiny bumps so that you didn't have to use car wash soap to wash the car. You just had to spray it with water and it would get just as clean. And so they did that. What does that do? That prevents thousands of gallons of soap runoff that all it does is pollute the, the earth. And uh, that's the type of research they do. If you look it up, rmi.org, you'll see uh, one, of the th one of the books they have out is called Winning the Oil Endgame of How to Get Off of uh, All This Oil Drilling and the Import Oil and Not Change Your Lifestyle at All. Long-winded answers. Anybody got another Question, I'll give it a shorter answer. No, no more, no more short questions? Okay, well thank you very much. I've got to get going. Right. Thank you. Thanks. Right.